In this video, we're going to continue our linear programming solution of a two decision variable minimization problem from the previous video. So if you need a refresher on what are the decision variables, what is the objective function, and what are the constraints, I encourage you to refer back to that previous video. In this video, we are going to go through um, the graphical solution, at least plotting our constraints. So let's go ahead and dive right in. So we already established our constraints in a previous video. And just as a reminder, we said that the constraint for nitrogen was 2x1 plus 4x2 must be greater than or equal to 16. Then that constraint for phosphate was 4x1 plus 3x2 must be greater than or equal to 24. And our constraint for calcium must be 3x1 plus x2 greater than or equal to 10. So let's go ahead and start plotting this. But first, we're going to find our x1 and x2 intercepts. So let's start with our constraint for nitrogen. So we're going to say that 2x1 plus 4x2 must be greater than or equal to 16. Let's solve for where it, the constraint intercepts with the x1 axis first. So we're going to set x2 is equal to 0. So 2x1 plus 4 times 0 must be greater than or equal to 16. So that means that 2x1 is equal to 16, which means that x1 is equal to 16 divided by 2. So x1 is equal to 8. So let's go ahead and we can just plot. Whoops. We can just plot this on our graph. So x1, when x2 is equal to 0, x1 is equal to 8. Similarly, we can say that when x1 is equal to 0, so 2x1 plus 4x2 greater than or equal to 16. So let x1 equal 0 this time. So 2 times 0 plus 4x2 is equal to 16. So therefore, x2 is equal to 16 divided by 4. So x2 is equal to 4. So again, we'll go up to our graph. And we look at that. We put a little dot there. x2 is equal to 4 when x1 is equal to 0. And all we're going to do is we're going to draw a line that right through these points. And we can go ahead and label this as our constraint. Just to remind ourselves, this was 2x1 plus 4x2 greater than or equal to 16. And if we want, we can also say that this was related to nitrogen. Just to keep things nice and simple for us. Okay, let's solve for our x and x1 and x2 intercepts for phosphate. So we have... 4x1 plus 3x2 greater than or equal to 24. And again, if you are unsure of how we arrived at these constraints, please see the previous video. So let's solve for x1 first. So let x2 is equal to 0. So 4x1 plus 3 times 0 is equal to 24. So that means that 4x1 is equal to 24. which means that x1 is equal to 24 divided by 4. So that means that x1 is equal to 6. So we go up to our line here, our graph here, and we'll just put a little dot here. x1 is equal to 6. Now let's solve for x2. So again, 4x1 plus 3x2 greater than or equal to 24. We've solved for x1 already, so let's let that equal 0 this time. So 4 times 0 plus 3x2 is equal to 24. So this means that 3x2 is equal to 24. So that means that x2 is equal to 24 divided by 3. So x2 is equal to 8.
So we can go back up to our graph and we're gonna plot x2 equal to eight. And then similar to what we did for our first constraint, we're just going to draw a line through these two points. Sorry, it's not exactly great. Let's try that again. That's better. And we can go ahead and label this as our constraint for 4x1 plus 3x2 greater than or equal to 24. So 4x1 plus 3x2 greater than or equal to 24. And this was for phosphate. Just to help us keep track of things. And we have one last constraint to plot, and that is our constraint for calcium. So our constraint line is 3x1 plus x2 greater than or equal to 10. So let's solve for x2 first because that seems to be the easiest. So 3x, sorry, 3 times 0, so setting x1 is equal to 0. So 3 times 0 plus x2 is equal to 10. So that just means that x2 is equal to 10. That's pretty easy, so let's put x2 is equal to 10. And then let's solve for 3x uh, for the x1. So 3x1 plus x2 greater than or equal to 10. We'll set x2 is equal to 0. So that means that 3x1 plus 0 is equal to 10. So that means that 3x1 is equal to 10. So x1 is equal to 10 divided by 3. So x1 is equal to 3.333. It's not as nice a number, but we can still plot it. So 3.33 is probably somewhere in the neighborhood of about there. So we can plot our line and we can just draw our line through these points. And we have plotted that line. And let's just make this a little bit cleaner so that we know which constraints we're working with. So we'll just move this one down so it's a little closer to that line. And then we'll put in our new constraint label here, which was 3x1 plus x2. 3x1 plus x2 greater than or equal to 10, and this was calcium. So now we have plotted all of our constraints. So now we need to look for our region of feasibility. So let's take a look at what these lines are asking of us. So 3x1, we'll just start with calcium. 3x1 plus x2 greater than or equal to 10. So we are greater than or equal to this line for calcium. Okay. What about nitrogen? 2x1 plus, x, plus 4x2 greater than or equal to 16. Again, we're looking for greater than. So it must be greater than that line. And then finally, our constraint for phosphate, which has us at 4x1 plus 3x2 greater than or equal to 24. So we are at greater than this line, which means that our feasibility region, the region that satisfies all of these constraints, is in this yellow shaded region here. And I highlight that we, are, we have an unbounded feasibility region, meaning that it continues on 
beyond our graph, but because we're dealing with a minimization objective function, so recall that our objective function, as we established in the previous video, so our objective function is the minimum is equal to six x1 plus three x2. Because we're dealing with a minimization problem, we are not concerned with our unboundedness to the right. So there we have it in this video, we have plotted our constraint lines and we are ready to solve for the optimal solution, but we will save that for another video. And that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. If this video helped to make business analytics easy, consider giving the video a like. And if you need additional help with business analytics, please consider subscribing to the channel. I look forward to solving many more problems with you next time.